I want to briefly cover a range of subjects relevant to my constituency of Inverclyde. Despite devolution, it's always important to remind constituents the influence that Westminster and the UK Government continues to exert over public services in our community. My constituency of Inverclyde has been particularly hard hit by the UK Government in recent years. Our Coast Guard station was closed with the loss of 31 expert jobs. That decision was taken at a UK level. It was done so against the will of local people and the experts who have said that safety would be compromised as a result of that closure. Likewise, in Port Glasgow, the job centre closed in 2017, despite Inverclyde having some of the highest rates of poverty and deprivation in the United Kingdom. Clients of this service now must rely on a single office in Greenock, which covers a wide geographical area from Langbank to Skelmley, both of which are actually outside of my constituency. And on broadband, it is time for the UK Government to take notice of Scotland. Telecoms is reserved to Westminster, yeah, yeah. yet the UK Government is contributing £21 million to the Reaching 100% programme. That is just 3% of the total. This can be starkly contrasted with the £600 million being provided by the SNP Scottish Government to ensure that all homes and businesses across Scotland have superfast broadband. The UK Government could also support the delivery of health services in Scotland by taking two specific actions. Firstly, support those parents of children with severely epileptic children by making it easier for them to access medical cannabis. Last year, the Government made all the right mood music and then failed to provide. In March of this year, I was one of the 80 MPs who delivered a petition on that subject that had almost 600,000 signatures. While the UK Government has made some minuscule steps forward, there is no point in legalising certain medications if no one can have access to them. I should clarify that. When I say no one can have access to them, if you have the money, then you can afford to pay for a private prescription and you can afford to tens of thousands of pounds per year, then you can have access to medical cannabis. If the UK Government is unwilling to take those necessary steps, then the action to help, and the action to help those families that accept the call made by the Scottish Government in 2018 to devolve the necessary powers to Holyrood. And in that same spirit, it is time, it is time for the UK Government to allow a drug consumption room, a safe drug consumption yeah, yeah, facility, yeah. an overdose prevention unit, whatever you want to call it, to be established in the west of Scotland. The Scottish Government and the Glasgow City Council, with cross-party support, says this measure must progress. Their plans, they want the plans to progress because the UK Government refuses to let go of their failed and outdated policy making on drugs. Scotland is facing an unprecedented drug crisis. 1,187 people died last year in Scotland. But the UK Government won't allow anyone to try something new based on rational, evidence based policy. DCRs across the world with the correct medical supervision and the lock zone on hand, has seen the, the zero deaths. Not one person has died in a DCR, and the UK government must open its eyes to those possibilities. Again, he, certainly. Would he agree with? Would he share my frustration that um, Glasgow's plans for a DCR have been in place for three years now, to, and the Home Office haven't even bothered to come to Glasgow and see why they're so needed? Yeah, yeah. It is symptom, symptomatic of the people and the fact that they will not look at the evidence placed in front of them. They want to reinvent the wheel at every opportunity. As an NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde, Glasgow City Council, Scottish Government all want this to happen. If you want to come and visit Glasgow and other areas, you can see the problem first hand and we are offering you a solution. Yeah. Yeah. Again, if the UK Government won't exercise their powers, so I did that. No, I did it, so I did it. So, and in conclusion, Mr. Speaker, no, I don't. I want to touch. I tried to intervene on the, 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 the minister on her speech, and she refused to take my intervention because she was talking about county lines. And I would like to encourage this government to approach the police and ask them to stop recruiting young people. They are approaching young kids on county lines, young, vulnerable men and women, and using them as police informants. This is an extremely dangerous policy to pursue, and I ask that they revisit this. So, in conclusion, much of Westminster's stewardship of public service can be boiled down 
to a policy of blocking, stifling or closing public services which may otherwise act in the public good. Scotland deserves better, but it cannot expect it from the current Prime Minister and his impotent UK Government. Yeah. Well, Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker, and a pleasure to follow the Honourable Member for Inverclyde, who is making a good case for his constituency and for